All right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And, uh, you know, the empty table means we don't have a bottle of this wine in stock. And I'm embarrassed to say that uh, it's one of my favorite new wines that we brought into the store. And that's what happens when we get excited about something. We sell out of it and then forget about it. And then uh, well, the owner of the property stopped in yesterday to uh, explain why these wines are so amazing. And it really is remarkable what these guys have done, two brothers, in the course of just a few years here. Uh, you know, it's a new project. The vineyards were just planted in 2007. They have 212 acres in Paso Robles, which uh, these guys were in the tech business where they got in the wine business. Retired at 34. I'm 45. Oh. I'm not jealous. I mean, I love my job. And I can't think of what I would rather do than get up every day and drink great wine. If you call it a job, I mean, you're lucky. Anyways, they planted very dense uh, here, 2,600 vines per acre. They dropped 86, 80% uh, of the fruit, which is amazing to think, man. Look, in the old days, you did that in your vineyard. People would just look at you like you're crazy. You're dropping 80% of all the fruit on the vines? Well, what happens is the fruit that is left is more intense. This is one of the only ways to make great wines from a young vineyard. And these guys have gotten huge scores already. I mean, it's amazing. And just the third leaf, they got a 96-point review from Robert Parker. So, I mean, you know, their success right there. And the Chardonnay Reserve, this is the first time I've had a white wine from these guys. The Soul of the Line was the wine that Parker reviewed and gave 96 points to it. And um, you know, the rest is history, man. These wines have had a huge demand. But don't worry, our wine-drinking people here are going to be taken care of because we were one of the first people on the bandwagon with Dow and they don't want to be in these big stores you know they want to be in a retail store like the wine watch where we can tell the story of what these guys have accomplished in a short period of time you know Paso Robles is bigger than both Napa and Sonoma put together but um, I don't know how many AVAs are in Paso Robles but you know Napa's got 15 uh, so the writing's on the wall you're going to see a lot of Paso Robles broken up into different AVAs very very soon and uh, these guys have actually created a group of Cabernet a collection of growers there to help promote the Paso Robles region so this is a region on the move if you guys have not visited Paso Robles uh, we highly encourage you wine drinking people that like to go travel to check it out Hearst Castle is a place that is not to be missed in the area also if you go down there anyways the soils there are calcareous limestone very similar to Saint Emilion and uh, these guys have thought of everything they keep the barrels at 50 degrees and they don't acidulate the wines use minimal sulfides really natural wine making here this 2012 reserve Chardonnay they do make a regular um has a very forward california nose even though they say that they've combined old world techniques and with new world wines this wine smells nothing but like california chardonnay to me a rich bouquet here of ripe tropical fruit vanilla bean spice creme caramel and even though they only make twelve thousand cases make 700 cases of this reserve chardonnay so tiny production wines um, uh, everything is done here to make the best wine possible. And this wine really shows it. Very nuanced, rich and creamy on the tongue with an array of tropical fruit, a nice hand of toasty oak spice in this wine, and uh, that lovely freshness and balance, though, really, uh, I mean, all the way through the finish, this wine even better on the second day. Most excellent juice. Definitely one of the best Chardonnays that I have had this year under $50. Not cheap, but still, like I said, the wine tastes amazing just like the red wines here which is what i was familiar with before uh the 1740 i'd not had and uh you know this is i guess the year that california um became california and uh they have a bell they have on the property from 1740 actually and it's hung up in their bell tower and they made a clone of this bell so they already had planned that somebody's probably going to steal it i guess it's a popular thing to do with bells and bell towers i'm sorry i'm not giving any of you people ideas or anything like that but I thought it interesting that they've already cloned the bell and uh this wine is a, a blend of 70 percent cabernet franc and 30 percent merlot to commemorate uh, the house wine that they had uh, while they were children, Cheval Blanc, which, uh, I mean, you know, these guys were definitely from well-to-do families. Even back then, if Cheval Blanc was your house wine, uh, you had some flow. And uh, this wine has got a good amount of dark cherry and plum fruit on the nose with dark earth, mocha, uh, some peppery tobacco spice there. Nice complexity here. This wine's got power and elegance, which to me is what Paso Robles is all about. Well, that's what these guys' wines are all about. And uh, plush berry fruit uh, highlighted by the 
distinct earthy character that you get and a little peppery spice here also really nice savoriness to this wine even though it has some lovely sweetness you know you got to have both in order to have balance and uh, some dry tannins coming in at the end though this wine has everything in proportion but just needs a little bit of time to come together 2011 uh, very fresh juice only 1100 cases produced though excellent juice it's 78 dollars uh, not that much better than the regular cab from Paso Robles, which they don't sell at the winery. Uh, it's 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, and this is a uh, their calling card wine, so it really does over-deliver for $30 a bottle. Wow. Uh, they do buy some fruit for this label, though, and uh, they but they farm the properties where they get this fruit some. So very distinct earthy quality I found to all three of these wines. And uh, dark currant, dark cherry fruit, notes of sweet tobacco spice, dark mocha, really nice complexity here on the nose. And this wine's got a nice touch of toasty oak spice here. But like I said, these wines all very balanced. Even though they're big, they still have elegance and a lovely smooth and polished finish here. This 2012, some nice spice and earthy notes at the end. Excellent juice. And then the Reserve, my first time trying this wine, the 2011. Uh, this is mostly a state fruit. They also purchased a little bit for this, 77% Cab, Cab Franc, Merlot, and Petit Verdot make up the rest. And uh, this one's got a load of dark currant and plum fruit, really lovely riches, richness here on the nose, a host of dark spices, sweet tobacco, chocolate, really complex bouquet, and even bigger on the second day. That is the sign of a truly great wine. I kept keep all my wines now till the next morning. Your palate is also fresher in the morning, another thing that uh, helps, and lots of minerality on the palate. They use pine oak. Uh, pink oak rather I'm sorry um, it's rosé in color and they say a lot of people don't know about this pink oak it's used by the Chateau Lafitte and a lot of other people that want elegant more elegant style wines and uh, really nice plushness to the, all of these wines even though they're big again I said this again both elegance and power in all of these wines lovely texture in this wine just ripe round tannins lots of that spice and earth nuance from the nose lasting through the finish most excellent juice it's seventy dollars and fifty cents hey these wines aren't cheap but they are really good the Paso Robles Cabernet definitely my pick one of the best Cabernets we have in the store at thirty dollars check it out I'm your host Andrew Lampasoni signing off for the wine watch saying remember always drink the good stuff first